Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So for the last three months, looting and riots have raged across the USA, sparked by the peaceful protests that followed the death of George Floyd. Thanks to the miracle of modern technology, there is video and live stream footage of the riots all over the internet available for free to anyone with an internet connection. It is very clear what is going on. A bunch of violent far-left thugs ransacking cities and terrorizing civilians, often dressed in black block Antifa riot gear and screaming Black Lives Matter, burning things down and provoking fights with cops which obviously I cannot show you in this video because it would bigly violate YouTube's terms of service, but the footage is not hard to find. But for some reason, the left-wing mainstream media and various top Democrats seem to think that they've got a way with convincing everyone that these are just peaceful protests, not riots. They've been pushing language like protests, demonstrations, marches, rallies, or my favorite, mostly peaceful protests, etc. since they began and have looked increasingly stupid stupid for doing so, because for every report uh, that the protests are peaceful, there is a piece of video footage filmed usually by on-the-ground independent journalists or the rioters themselves depicting acts of arson, looting and violence. I mean seriously, if I had a dollar for the amount of things those far-left thugs have set fire to, I would never have to work again. Not only that, people are experiencing this firsthand. They're having their shops destroyed, they're being harassed and terrorized in their suburban houses late at night, and believe it or not, they talk. But for some reason, the media and the Democrats keep sticking their fingers in their ears and pretending it's not happening. It's like they think the American people are stupid or something. They're even encouraging it, like this tweet from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez back in June telling people to stay in the streets, it's working. Or this guide she put on Instagram on how to protest safely, which included handy tips like covering up any identifiable features like tattoos, disabling your phone data, and bringing heat proof gloves. Or vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, who tweeted out a call to action to get people to donate to the bail fund for those protesting on the ground in Minnesota. But these were not protests. They were riots in which 99 people were arrested and there was a lot of video evidence to prove it. But the best mischaracterization of what's been going on came from CNN, where a reporter was literally standing in front of a bunch of burning cars, accompanied by a strap down the bottom of the screen that read, fiery but mostly peaceful protests. Anyway, it had got to the point where I think that we were all so used to the lies and mischaracterizations that we've moved past the point of anger and begun just rolling our eyes. I mean, the narrative was so easily debunked by literal on the ground footage bounding around the internet every day that the non-factual bleating of CNN at all and the Democrats was very easy to just label fake news and ignore. However, around August 31st, there was an almost overnight shifting of the narrative. Suddenly, it went from police are attacking peaceful protesters who are marching for Black Lives Matter to right-wing groups are turning up at peaceful Black Lives Matter demonstrations armed and dangerous and looking for a fight and Trump is to blame. <laughs> Now, again, to anybody who has been keeping an eye on this, that is just the most ridiculous assertion. It's just fake. The violence has mostly been between far-left thugs and cops, and yet still this commentary started coming out from the media, and timing-wise, it followed both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris finally condemning the riots after a shooting in Portland that I will explain later on. Now, Joe Biden had already condemned the violence on June the 2nd, so this isn't technically the first time for him. However, he was completely silent about it for 88 days after that, which raises an awful lot of questions. Kamala, on the other hand, has not only not condemned the violence until now, as I mentioned earlier, she was actively encouraging it by fundraising bail money for the rioters. Now, I'm going to read you their statements and you will see one common and highly questionable denominator. Here's Joe's. The deadly violence we saw overnight in Portland is unacceptable. Shooting in the streets of a great American city is unacceptable. I condemn this violence unequivocally. I condemn violence of every kind by anyone, whether on the left or the right. And I challenge Donald Trump to do the same. Huh? 
We must not become a country at war with ourselves, a country that accepts the killing of fellow Americans who do not agree with you, a country that vows vengeance toward one another. But that is the America that President Trump wants us to be, the America he believes we are. What? As a country, we must condemn the incitement of hate and resentment that led to this deadly clash. It is not a peaceful protest when you go out spoiling for a fight. What does President Trump think will happen when he continues to insist on fanning the flames of hate and division in our society and using the politics of fear to whip up his supporters? He is recklessly encouraging violence. He may believe tweeting about law and order makes him strong, but his failure to call on his supporters to stop seeking conflict shows just how weak he is. What? Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. Kamala retweeted Biden's statement with this. I join in condemning this violence. This cannot and must not be who we are. Americans deserve a president who will heal our country and bring people together, not fan the flames of hate and division. Okay, let's back up a bit. What the hell are they doing going from ignoring or encouraging the violence to suddenly condemning it overnight and blaming Trump and Trump supporters even though it's Democrat supporters and leftists who are instigating the riots and Donald Trump has been condemning them from day one. It is gaslighting of the highest order, like it's beyond parody. So why have they done this and why has the media suddenly jumped on board? Well, it's for a few reasons. On August 26th, four days before Biden and Kamala made these statements, a kid named Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two Black Lives Matter rioters and injured a third. Now, needless to say, the media and top Democrats jumped on this with glee, spinning the narrative that Kyle was a terrible white supremacist mass, mass shooter who had killed in cold blood. Ayanna Presley sums this up. A 17-year-old white supremacist domestic terrorist drove across state lines armed with an AR-15. He shot and killed two people who had assembled to affirm the value, dignity, and worth of black lives. Fix your damn headlines. Only none of that was true. Ayana and the rest were telling a bold-faced lie. Reams and reams of video footage from that night proves that Kyle was on the retreat all three times. Far-left riders were chasing him with the intent of physically harming him, one of them had even a handgun on him, and Kyle shot in self-defense in all three instances. Not only that, there is no evidence that Kyle is a white supremacist, and he did an interview earlier in the day stating that he was only there to protect property and to act as a medic. Once again, the video evidence contradicted the narrative. The left was not able to make Kyle the scapegoat on which they could pin all of Biden's re-election hopes. It just didn't stick. The second thing that happened was a couple of days later in Portland. An unarmed Patriot Prayer member named Aaron J. Danielson, who was wearing his Patriot Prayer hat at the time, was shot and killed by a man named Michael Ryanall, who described himself on Facebook as proudly Antifa and a big Black Lives Matter supporter. He was killed by law enforcement on September 3rd when they tried to arrest him. Now, the video footage of this incident, while there is much, much less of it, indicates it was possibly a cold-blooded killing. It depicts a man yelling, we got a couple right here, pull it out, followed by a cloud of pepper spray and a split second later, pop, pop. Make of that what you will. And while Michael Rhino claimed self-defense, that doesn't square with what is depicted in the video footage or with the eyewitness account of Chandler Pappas, who was with Jay when he was killed. They came up behind us, they shot my friend and killed him. Oh. What, was there warning? I mean, was there, were you in the middle of a dispute before this happened? No. Or what, tell us the circumstances, if you would. Just the yelling. I mean, when they started yelling at us, we turned around and, uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't even have time to register that somebody was pointing a gun at us before the shots went off. Either way, there is simply no way the Democrats can spin that incident in their favor. And the final thing that has led up to their gaslighting is the polls. Now, we should always take the polls with a big grain of salt, but over the last month or so, they have well and truly tightened. Biden has lost a lot of his big leads in swing states, and while he is still mostly ahead, he is doing considerably worse than Hillary Clinton was at the same time. Why? Because funnily enough, 
defunding the police and ignoring or encouraging riots and mayhem doesn't poll well. According to a recent Gallup poll, large majorities of people, including black people, do not believe the police should be abolished, nor do they want less of a police presence in their neighborhoods. And according to the latest monthly Democracy Institute Sunday Express poll, Trump has 48% of the popular support over Biden's 45%. Just one poll, but still interesting. So once again, the Democrats have taken their cues from Twitter and the mainstream media, something you'd think they'd learned not to do in 2016, but apparently not. So in order to rectify the situation or the potential problems, they are backpedaling and gaslighting and outright lying. And the worst thing is, they know their supporters will just believe it. Honestly, the Biden, Kamala and the Democrats have the sheer audacity not only to blame Trump for the violence, but to say that he is inciting it and hasn't condemned it makes me so freaking mad because it's a blatant lie. It is their supporters who have been causing this mayhem. It is their voters instigating the violence. Throwing the blame at Donald Trump supporters and saying that Trump hasn't called them off is stupid because it's not Donald Trump's supporters who are causing this. They are not the instigators. They are not the ones burning down buildings or injuring cops or trashing businesses. They might show up occasionally, and occasionally they have bad intentions, but as we can see from the riot footage, they are always outnumbered, and in the case of Kyle and Jay, marked for execution. But let's be real. We shouldn't be surprised at all that the radical left is rising up and committing large-scale violence in the name of politics. The Democrats have been implicitly and explicitly encouraging them to do so for the past four years. Check out this compilation put together by the very clever Cauldron Pool. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. When they go low, we kick them. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? The biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. So I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. You would have been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said if we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face! When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. This whole three-month nightmare is the responsibility of left-wing anarchist thugs, not Donald Trump and not Trump supporters, and you can see that for yourself if you live stream the riots or consume any piece of media outside the mainstream press. Trump has not only been condemning the riots, he's even offered the National Guard to the city's most affected, which, by the way, are mostly run by Democrat mayors. Yet these Democrat mayors, like Lori Lightfoot of Chicago and Ted Wheeler of Portland, are refusing Trump's help. And yet Kamala Harris, Joe Biden and the media have the gall, the gumption, the hide to blame Donald Trump. Are they on drugs? The gaslighting and the political desperation is just astronomical. But the Democrats and the left at large have kind of boxed themselves into this corner by how they portray themselves. Now you will have noticed that in left-wing politics there is a big emphasis on morality. They're always shrieking about how tolerant and moral they are and how they're on the right side of history and how evil conservatives are, etc, etc, etc. 
In other words, they hinge their whole political shtick on being the goodies as opposed to the baddies. The problem with this approach is that not only does it drive away anyone with critical thinking skills or a knowledge of human nature, it leaves absolutely zero room for fault or flaws. If there's even one hint that it's the left at the heart of any kind of violence or unrest, then the whole house of cards just falls to pieces and they are left with nothing. That's why the left-wing media has had such trouble even admitting that Antifa is real or that far-left groups are responsible for the riots. It's why they insist that it's actually right-wingers who pose the greatest threat to humanity because the far-right tends to operate by aiming for mass loss of life in a lone wolf capacity. They use this to eclipse the fact that the large-scale violence, destruction of property and maiming of people is almost exclusively perpetrated by left-wing extremists right at this point point in history. But hey, they haven't killed as many people in America as the far right has, so it just doesn't matter as much. An argument to which I always say that if your barometer of unacceptable political violence is literal mass murder, then you probably need to examine your moral compass. Anyway, what I'm saying is that the regressive left has a lot of trouble accepting and admitting that there is a faction of rot and evil on their own side of the political fence. This is because they are so obsessed with being the goodies that they refuse to realize that, at least at this point in history, they're actually the baddies. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Conservatives, however, are the opposite. We have no problem admitting and accepting that there are bad people on our side of the fence and we routinely condemn them every time they do something bad because we don't hinge our whole shtick on being the moral side of things. We know there's room for flaws. So everyone, please be aware of this calculated narrative shift by the Democrats and the mainstream media. They are telling outright lies. Do not believe them and do not let them get away with it. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.